Hi, my name is Lawrence Whitfield. I have a math degree from more than 40 years ago, and I spent most of my working life in the corporate sector, so my math might be a bit rusty. But I do have a retirement hobby that involves making uh, videos using GeoGebra of various celestial mechanics situations. So as you can imagine, I end up using lots of parametric equations and sliders to generate motion such as orbit, spin of the earth, the apparent motion of the sun, uh, movement of shadows and so on. And that brought me to an angle that astronomers use that's called the azimuth. And it's also used in spherical coordinate systems, which brought me to today's rather simple, but a bit tricky and kind of interesting problem. I would like to spend some time understanding the relationship between the azimuth angle and what I would call the usual angle. In high, school in high school trigonometry, we usually think of an angle as starting on the positive x-axis and then making its way around the circle in a counterclockwise direction. By contrast, the azimuth angle starts on the positive arm of the y-axis and it travels in a clockwise direction. So as I mentioned, I use lots of parametric equations to get circular motion. And I'll use equations like this on the left, where I say P equals to um, R cosine of theta, R sine theta. And then as theta goes from zero to two pi, I, it will generate uh, a circle, a point going around a circle. And for those not familiar with parametric equations, you'll of course recognize this as being polar coordinates, or for that matter, you could use simple trigonometry to work out the coordinates of any one of the points. So sometimes I want to know the coordinates of the azimuth point, which isn't a formal concept, but it's something that I've made up and that I use. But the trick is I want to use this same theta. So it's not to be confused with converting, like well, for example, when the azimuth is over here, how would you measure that in, in the, the usual manner? That's not what we're doing, we're, we're doing something else instead. I've written out my formal statement of my problem here, which you can read if you want, uh, but in the interest of time, I'm not going to read it all out. Uh, a picture is worth a thousand words. So to recap, I want to take this point, and express it in a parametric equation such as this, where I have a function of theta for my x coordinate and a function of theta for my y coordinate, but I want to leverage the theta that I have over here using the usual angle. This would be a great spot for you to pause if you want to think about how you would solve the problem before we proceed. Now, as we proceed, I would imagine that Many people would simply use trigonometry or trig identities, uh, but I chose to use linear algebra and linear transformations uh, for reasons that I will explain in a moment. If you're teaching or learning basic linear algebra, this is at least one person had a practical problem to solve uh, using these techniques. Even though what I'm doing is just theoretical, it was practical for me, that's for sure. So what I did was I started with the, what we're calling the usual angle. And I first reflected it in the x-axis, as you can see we do here. So everything just flips down. And then you can see by inspection that in order to get to the azimuth, we're going to rotate in a counterclockwise direction by 90 degrees. So in order to reflect in the x-axis, we're going to start out by drawing uh, this little diagram on the right so that we can track what happens to the basis vectors. So we've done the U vector in the leftmost column and the V vector in the rightmost column. So the U vector, conveniently enough, was right on the line of reflection. So it will not change. There we have our one zero. But the V vector is going to drop down uh, into the position of zero minus one. So that gives us this transformation matrix to which we're going to multiply by our uh, parametric point from the usual angle. 
and we have a two by one, a two by two times a two by one, and our answer is going to be a two by one. And here I've shown my work for those who are interested. It's always nice to have lots of zeros when we're doing matrix multiplication. So I get this intermediate step, which I'm going to carry over to the next step, which as you recall, was to rotate counterclockwise by 90 degrees. So again, we start out with U and V. Well, this time they both move. The U moves up to zero one. The zero one up here is going to move down onto the X axis and it's going to become minus one zero. And remember, this is our from the answer from before. We do our multiplication, show our steps. And here's our final answer. And this is, came as a surprise to me. So basically all I had to do was to simply reverse the coordinates that I had in my regular parametric equation. And I certainly didn't see that coming. I wonder if you did, please let me know in the comments if so. Now, as a reminder, two by two matrices do not have the commutative property when the operation is multiplication. So the order does matter. And it's a little bit like those magic eye problems, depending on what you see first. If I looked at it in a different way, I noticed that I could reflect in the y-axis and then I would rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Let's take a look. So if I reflect in the y-axis, this full quadrant piece move flips over to the uh, second quadrant. And if I take the this section, which is in the second quadrant, it's gonna flip to the first quadrant. And again, by inspection, if I rotate around 90 degrees, then it's going to look like this. And by the way, one of the reasons I chose to use linear algebra was it takes care of all the scenarios of all four quadrants. Because if you just use trigonometry or you just kind of try and do it manually, you have to pay very careful attention to, your, uh, to the signs so you don't get tripped up on that. But even though I've only shown the one scenario here, uh, you can certainly test it out and it, it does work for all of the quadrants in question. So in order to reflect in Y and then rotate by 90, we're going to reflect in Y. So uh, this time our uh, one zero becomes minus one zero and our zero one is the one that stays where he is. And there we get our intermediate step. And then we come through and rotate by 90. So um, you can see what the new matrix would be. And then we multiply by the intermediate step. And again, we get the same answer. So I found that pretty interesting. It's simple enough. You could do it manually, but I thought it was a nice little linear algebra uh, problem. So I'd like to thank you for watching. And what I'm most interested in knowing in the comments is if the end result was obvious to you at a glance or how would you have solved it or did you solve it or would you have solved it? And of course, any other feedback. I'd also like to thank my math buddies, Paul and Alyssa and GeoGebra.org. So thanks for watching and I look forward to pre presenting something again next year. Bye for now.